So this one says, this video annoyed me because every single African leader who tried to set Africa free was killed. Wearing Gwabi, Patrice Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, Jonas Savimbi, and so on, and so on, and so on. This is the one argument that I have the hardest time with. Because whenever I hear this argument, my first reaction is like, and so what? Not to deny what any of these people has tried to do. But in fact, so many of these people had drunken the Marxist socialist ideology of their times. And if you know anything about Marxist socialism is that it's bred nothing but poverty and death and misery everywhere it's, it's been tried. And they keep saying, yeah, but we never got it. It, it, it. it was never done right. How many more tens of millions of people are we gonna need to die for this failed ideology? How many more? And uh, besides that, is it because so-and-so tried, so-and-so tried, so-and-so tried, and they got killed from what you're saying? Because for me, the story is much more complicated than that. For one, I have no patience for violent revolutions. I just don't. I know Marxist socialists love that. It's their, you know, it's their signature, violence, and they think revolution is in a breed. But, you know, I look at all this place. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation for another day, I'm sure. We're going to have a lot of conversations. But, and even then, yes, so you say, my God, huh, everybody who has done try to do something about this has been killed. So what are you saying exactly then? So you're telling me that we're still poor <clears throat> because all the people who tried to do something got killed. So we're not... You shouldn't expect me to try more. Actually, I don't even know what you're saying. And I think this one is so disturbing to me because I'm not even sure what point you're trying to make. The reason why every time, and there's so many people who come up with this, this counter argument, what do you want us to do? You know, everybody who tried has been killed. Does Thomas Sankara mean nothing to you? Gaddafi, all of these people, you know, they had this great idea of we're going to have a one Africa. And first of all, I'm like this one Africa that all of you are waiting for. What a bunch of, I don't even have a right name. But this is so typical central planning to think that everything should be planned from the top. This idea that one person or entity or organization should be speaking for all African nations at once. Do I believe in the, in the, the free movement of uh, people, goods and services and ideas within the continent? You betcha. I'm a firm believer in the free movement of all those elements. Always, everywhere, all the time. But it stops right there. I certainly would not want to be part of this huge mammoth of, um, you know, like a huge... Um, centralized planning agency that's going to be ripe for corruption. Already so many of you are complaining. As a matter of fact, I think all of you complain about our leaders. Our leaders are corrupt. Yet you want to pick one of these people to lead all of the continent and supposedly speak with one voice when we're making deals with the outside world. Who exactly do you propose to be that person? Unless you think it should be you. And then even if it was you, and let's say I even, we all agree that you're the most saintly person in the world. Have you ever heard about what power does to people? Power corrupts. So if you think that I wait, I'm gonna wait, or I believe even in this idea of one centralized power, you know, entity or person all of a sudden making deals for the whole of a continent. Nope, I'm not for that. I'm not. So it seems to me that when I'm hearing, when I'm hearing people complain about so many people tried, everybody that tried got killed. 
it's almost like you're telling me no leader is going to try because they're scared of being killed and that's what keeps us poor so we're putting the blame back on supposedly those who are killing or interfering is there interferences you betcha for sure but again Are you telling me that France truly has us so much by the B-A-L-L-S that there is nothing any of us should try and that it is perfectly acceptable for us to keep watching for hundreds of millions of us and our lives To be ransacked the way they're being ransacked? Is that what you're saying? I have a problem with that. I do. That doesn't sit well with me. <laughs> so, yes, we continue fighting. And most importantly, maybe we use different tools. Because most of these people you put in here, Sankara and others and the people like that, they were Marxist socialists. So if poverty is what we're talking about today, remember I said Africa is not poor today because of colonialism. I said it's not poor. Whatever else you want to talk about in Africa, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I said Africa is not poor. So I'm talking about poverty. If you don't want to be poor, you let your wealth creators work. Everywhere around the world, they're called entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs build prosperity. And of course, the entrepreneurs don't happen in a vacuum. Entrepreneur doesn't work alone. Starts a business. Needs people to work in the business. Needs people to buy from the business. Needs people to supply to the business. Needs a community in which to exist needs a purpose for which it exists. That whole ecosystem is the forces for which prosperity is built. And it is a universal way of building prosperity. Anyone who knows of any other way prosperity has been built anywhere else, please email me. But as long as that's the way prosperity is built, then it also means if you want that phenomenon to happen beautifully and to be thriving and flourishing, you need to offer your entrepreneurs the best business environment that there is, period. And the truth is, the nations in Africa that are offering right now the best business environment on the continent, the top four of them, top four, four, yeah, of them, we're talking about Mauritius, Botswana, Zambia, and Rwanda. A couple of those have just most recently gotten on that journey. At um, When we're looking at, uh, when I say recently, we're looking at the time frame of a, a country's life, right? So recently doesn't mean they started two years ago, five years ago. But in the case of Rwanda, maybe it's been going on for decades that they've been making these changes and putting the reforms in place to um, offer a greater business environment to their entrepreneurs. And the magic is starting to happen. We're starting to see the numbers go up. Nothing to be like, oh, Rwanda has made it into a middle income nation yet or you know, beyond that, but it's definitely on the trajectory. And why would it surprise anyone? Why? Because any time this stuff has been tried, it yielded the same result. If a nation offers a great business environment to its people, to its entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs go on to enterprise. And with that comes the prosperity. It's that simple. And by the way, those nations that I talked about, Have, have these leaders been killed? The ones who went on to put these reforms in place, have they been killed? Have they been cooed? If 
they're still here and they're on their way. Botswana is already already atop um, on the on the higher end of a middle income nation. Mauritius, same. Mauritius is richer than uh, some Western nations. The people who put that in place have they been killed? No. So can we learn from them? Can we learn from them? If you don't want to learn from other nations because they happen to not be Africans, which I find is the most stupid thing in the world to say, some things are universal. But if you must only look at African nations, there are some examples right there for you. And don't come and talk telling me, oh yeah, but um, so-and-so, um, I we know he's maybe stealing um, these minerals from that country. I hear all of that stuff. I'm not gonna comment on any of this. What I comment on is did, in the case of Kagame, did he or not set a better business environment? Yes, he did. And is that attracting talent and capital from within Rwanda, the region and around the world? Yes, it is. And that's the only factor I'm judging. Everything else people want to go on, on, on those terrains on, those arguments are for you to make. Because I don't understand those part of the argument. The part of the argument I'm interested in and I, and I, and I, and I understand is what are the reforms that are being done? Is this person serious about being a serious top reformer on the Doing Business Index ranking? Is this person paying attention to how easy or hard it is for its entrepreneurs to enterprise? So, they can they, so that they can build prosperity. Just so we stay on target. Because I know how we can be. I'm pointing to you over here and you're trying to take me into some other whatever. So we're talking about economic freedom here. And those leaders of ours who are serious about it and taking the proper steps to correct the situation are seeing the GDP rising. And with higher GDPs rising, everything else becomes easier. So unless you can tell me that some of these other people you're thinking about have done any of this type of work, and that's supposedly why they got killed, then the argument doesn't stand for me. And I have no patience for this attitude of so-and-so tried, didn't succeed. As long as you're alive, you try. What other choice do you have? What other choice do we have? Sit in our homes, oftentimes, especially the ones that irks me the most, is the people, those of us who tempted everything, did everything in their power to escape these nations of ours. Today, somewhere in diaspora, somewhere around the world, yet still spitting on this need for greater economic freedom stuck in this rhetoric of we're poor because we've been done wrong. We all choose what we work on and where we operate. This is the hell I will die on. We need to free our entrepreneurs on the ground so that they can do what entrepreneurs do, which is build value, wealth, and prosperity. That's how prosperity is built. Whether we like it or not. Are there things that you might want to do better to the, uh, in that process? Of course. But just sitting somewhere and complaining until the cows come home, to me, is not acceptable. So once again, I am here for those who are saying after 60 plus some years since the so-called independences, it makes no sense that we are still where we are. And there's got to be something we've got to be able to do about this. I'm here for those people. Everyone else, keep complaining. Better yet, delete me from your... <laughs> 
from your uh, life. Um, block me. Do whatever you need to do so that we don't bother your worldview and you can stay in that perfect world where you are just the victim and everyone else has done you wrong and it's only normal that you're paralyzed today and doing and being where you are. Do what suits you. But I'm putting myself out there so that those who are ready to try something else, especially when it's supported by evidence, get to say, you know what? We're ready for action, man. We are ready. Where are we going? Come with me. <laughs> the place ahead is, it's, it's a fun place. Can you imagine to be part of this force of building our, your country up? And then others doing the same in their own countries as well. And then it's all of a sudden seeing this continent that's looking so radically different. It has built prosperity and it has done it in a way where we adopted what works in terms of prosperity building. And then we put our unique different, you know, countries flavors on it, whatever it looks like or can be. That would not have changed the past for sure. But I would know it would do a lot of healing for a lot of us.